I've traveled the world tracking down river monsters in some of the most dangerous waters imaginable. But my journey to catch a deadly electric eel ends at a mud hole in the middle of cattle pasture. It's the last place on earth I'd expect to find an elusive, lethal fish. I'm just making a bit of a trench from my point of view. It'll be easier to handle if there's some kind of sort of notch that it's in rather than it's being able to slip and slide all over the place. My normal capture method would be useless in water this shallow. So out goes the rod and in comes a lasso, fitting for cowboy country. Because electric eels don't rely on physical strength, pulling it out of the water shouldn't be that hard. But not getting shocked will be, so protective clothing is essential. We've got a plan. The plan is not so much to, to sort of go after the head with the noose, but to position that and then get it to go through the noose. Just taking a few deep breaths because one slip and you know it could be very nasty indeed, need to be so focused and so careful about this. An eel this size can deliver a shock of 650 volts. That's enough to stop my heart in seconds. First go, amazing, first go. <laughs> Electric eels can keep on shocking out of water, but the rubber gloves we're wearing protect us from this. Oh, look at the colours on this thing. These are wonderful. I've got to give it a clean. That is like, it's doing a sort of, it looks like a muscle contraction. Spasm, almost. That's when it's actually shocking. Because electric eels get most of their oxygen from breathing air, they can stay out of water for long periods of time. That's five foot ten and a half. That's pretty much exactly the same as, as me. This is exactly the same size as the eel that killed Francisco, the 21-year-old man who died in the tiny pond near Villanova. If I wasn't wearing these rubber gloves, I could be dead too. It's over 100 degrees, and I don't want the fish to overheat, so time it went back in the water. 